Microsoft is known for kind of over chroming in some ways. I mean, right. there's you know there was just this kind of little hubbub. Uh, Steven Sanofsky right. posted some some of the you know Explorer, and you, you guys were talking about getting around through files and folders and searching and this exposing all of these pieces of Chrome that would allow you to right. d you know ostensibly do that better, but. Right. It looks very daunting to an average user, right? Because you just want to get at the things you need to get at right. quickly. So there is this battle at Microsoft because if you look at Windows Phone, right. Chromeless experience, everything right. goes away. You just see big text, big images. Right. You're not. It's not information dense. That's right. How? how I mean, how do you merge this it's very? Inf and, and it really, you've got. It's not just that. Uh, it's not just that you're trying to bring that sensibility over, but it's a question of how do you treat that content and that data. I mean, does Office need to be as Chrome heavy as it was previously? Right. Does does the does the you know, Windows Explorer have to be as Chrome heavy as it was right. you know, previously? Uh, the short answer is we don't think so. Right. But it does pose some interesting and difficult challenges in that we do still have fundamentals that we have to deal with. In a very dense environment, let's say uh, uh, a view, right? we still need to control what you see first, second, and third, at least through design principles. So now, we don't have a crutch like Chrome to help us <clears throat> you know, uh, push and pull the visual. So composition, layout, font scaling, contrast ratios, all become the technique that's absolutely required. So we have to up our game, so to speak, in solid visual design principles, motion principles, et cetera, in order to uh, create the right level of hierarchy so that users don't get uh, overwhelm with too much information. Right. Because Chrome did perform a little bit of that role to help us manage what you saw first, second, and third. So I think it's a fun challenge. Um, and I'm excited to, to share it when, we're, when it's time. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we're not done. We, we've got a lot of work to do. But I think it's a, it's a language and a philosophy that uh, is very extensible into all environments. And you th so this is, a, you think, a, something core for Microsoft as a whole is that yep. you know let's dechrome it, let's make it, let's simplify in a way that obviously is going to make sense for that's users. Right. But you really, company wide, that's right, are owning this concept. Yes. I think that's exciting to people because yes. uh, if anything, we've watched Windows, and you know, for me, I'm and I'll say this: I'm a Mac user, right. um, and I really love Windows Phone. I like what I've seen of Windows 8, the 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 Metro piece. Right. But then there's the other piece that's very familiar. Windows, right. and I'll admit, you know, it has not been, that interface has always felt overly complicated to me. Yep. And the idea that you guys are owning the concept of company-wide, scaling that back, or kind of right. simplifying it to make sense for, That's obviously for different scenarios, That's is, right. is exciting. And, you, and you, you're serious about that. Very serious about it. That's, I, and I, and I, I, I take I, you at your word. I, no, I, I mean, it's, yes, very serious about it. Uh, myself and, and a bunch of others, many others, in the design community, uh, as near as even last week, had a day where we went off site and we actually talked about all the levels and details of what we just described and reinforced this commitment that it's important that we, we uh, practice and learn from each other so yeah. that it really does is something that sticks. Ultimately, it's the right thing for the business because it's the right thing for users, yeah. right? Uh, and we want, this is, the, this is the challenge we have. We strip out the extraneous details the risk is that we look boring, right? And how do you manage motion and gradients so you don't see a gradient, but you feel it? Mm. Well, when is a motion non-existent? Because you didn't even know it happened, but it reinforced function. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going, and this is the level of craft that we have to up our game to. Yeah. Because stripping all that out comes at a risk if we don't execute it really well, right? right. Uh, but ultimately, it's your content, right? And content and information is getting denser and denser. And we believe the way, only way to scale in the future is to prepare ourselves to strip out things, strip ourselves out of the equation so that what you're feeling and seeing and using is all about you. It's not about us. And that's, that's the long pole. If we went down a path uh, of being too concerned about um, surfacing ourselves in that equation, there's no room for you. And there's already too much noise in the equation. Right? So I. I I and, and the design community and Microsoft are committed to this. Uh, we still, again, have a challenge of how does it scale into different environments, different different interaction models. But philosophically, uh, no one's batting an eye. Is this a is this a different Microsoft than it was ten years ago? I mean, you've been here twenty years. I think you know it's it's uh, in many ways it's certainly different in in the I think the the confidence of design design at a collective level. 
And it's because it's not no longer just about designers or researchers. I think the organizations are becoming more design oriented. So there's a collective confidence that we can talk about aesthetics like this, and it's not a foreign language that we have to box up and only use it with in, in special crowds. We can have this kind of conversation at the executive level, where they were more receptive and understanding of what we're talking about. Right. And in fact, very much ways, in many ways, uh, supporting and, and pushing us to do more, right? Uh, and the other side is there's a, even in the 20 years, this is still the same Microsoft, the good parts of it. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a super, it, it can be an intense, but you're working with super smart people, right, that all want to do the right thing. Uh, we just have to funnel ourselves and really focus on communications and doing the right thing and take the noise out of the system and really deliver the way that Metro is trying to deliver by filtering out, again, things that are not necessary and only things that matter. And that happens at a larger scale. And I think... Um, those two things in combination maybe make for a little different Microsoft, but it feels, um, I think design is confident, very empowered, and it feels very collaborative right now. So what's the next thing for you? What's, the, what's the, your next challenge? You know, the next challenge I think is what we're right in the middle of. We still have um, a, a productivity experience and, uh, or set of experiences that the company uh, has yet to release that is still in design uh, with. We have um, uh, more work to do at a corporate level uh, to bring the things that we're discussing into a, um, into a plan that actually scales where it's no longer starting just as a grassroots level and we have a lot of goodwill, but we need to organize this, or organize it so that it sticks, right. it becomes operationalized, right? Um, and the artist in me, also doesn't want to overdefine it because we'll kill the darn thing. Right. You know, darn right. thing meaning this this notion of the, the qualitative aspects and subjective aspects of design. Yeah. That comes from experimentation, you know, uh, a sense of humor and all those other things that keep us light. Right. That's really because we could go the other direction where we take this thing too seriously.